Hello, uh, my name is Gregor Strutz. I'm uh, the founder and one of the two managers of a, of a small design agency, which is based in Berlin, Germany. We are called Inkel Design, and we are working with all inclusive design solutions for people with and without disabilities. Um, yeah, I'm standing here also for my colleagues, of course. I'm not the only one working in Inkel. Uh, we are 10 people working together. We are product designers and graphic designers. We collaborate with the architects and audio describers. And our focus and our goal is to find design solutions for the whole variety of um, yeah, um, disabilities that are existing, always with the, always with the focus of uh, finding solutions which will combine people with and without disabilities. This is our understanding of inclusion, and we do believe that design plays a very, very large role in order to achieve this. Um, we are working uh, in the field of uh, mobility limitations. We are working with blind and partially sighted people. We do have a, a huge uh, specialization in the field of um, like the easy to read and the plain language. Of course, then in German, we work with sign language for people hard of hearing. And we are also having a larger specialization where we are, wor where we are working with design solutions for people uh, which uh, like came as refugees to Germany and trying to build up a new life here with us. Um, we are working in very, very different fields. One of our main areas we are working in are uh, public institutions, uh, governmental institutions, uh, cultural institutions. And in here we do have like three major areas we are working in. The one is everything about or uh, orientation. So we are working with tactile objects which give you overviews over buildings. Um, mostly with the goal of combining them with uh, new wayfinding systems, which will be then again accessible for people with and without disabilities. My focus here is usually to, uh, you know, like come with intangible object, which gives you like a three-dimensional impression of something which you are then repeating on the different areas, because we, for example, know that people with learning disabilities uh, find it much, much easier if something three-dimensional um, is like the base of their orientation system. But of course, again, then here, like uh, the goal is to combine blind and partially sighted people with the random visitor and also, for example, uh, yeah, uh, people with learning disabilities. So those examples I'm showing here are from a very large monument, which is placed south of Berlin, 200 kilo kilometers longer to the south, the monument of the, for the Battle of the Nations in Leipzig. Uh, East Germany's second largest city. Another very, very nice uh, project we, uh, we did and which is like in the second area we are working in the area of, you know, uh, producing and designing accessible medias and books um, is this book that I'm showing here, um, a project that we finished last year for the LWL Museum of uh, for Art and Culture in a place which is called Münster in the western part of Germany, um, like in a book which translates eight art pieces from the huge collection that this museum is exp um, presenting in their building, um, uh, with, yeah, translating those um, uh, art pieces um, to blind and partially sighted people. The focus is of telling a story. Uh, the focus of telling a story about the human being and how the representation of the human being has changed in the last centuries. So we are starting from Jesus uh, on the cross, uh, from the Middle Ages, and then all the way up to uh, like uh, our century and with a very like, uh, or the last century with a very modern uh, art piece of uh, boys. Again, here also the focus of um, finding art solutions which are acceptable, uh, um, accessible, and combining these solutions with a very, very high level of aesthetics, 
um, to reach also to other user groups than only the blind and partially sighted. But of course, the blind and partially sighted people are our main focus um, yeah, to work for. It has been a very, very nice project. Uh, we are doing similar projects right now for other museums. Um, the combination of uh, transparent tactile objects connected to some high uh, contrast elements and content um, yeah, to connect and to bring people together and make them have a nice experience in a museum. Another project that we realized um, in spring this year was for the Museum Island Schloss Gotthoff, which is very, very close to the Danish borderline, the German borderline to Denmark. Um, here we have done some like two hands-on stations uh, in an um, exhibition of contemporary art of an um, artist who is called uh, Christopher Lehnfuhl. And uh, here we, are, we were dealing very, with a very, very interesting question to us, and this is how we can translate art and the phenom phenomenon of uh, perspective to the born blind people who usually don't have it very, find it very, very difficult to understand that things might not be straight, that objects which actually have the same height or the same dimensions can appear to us in different sizes and so on. And um, yeah, so what you see here is that we were working, for example, with this art piece, which is displayed in the back. It is um, called the glass still life. It is showing some bottles and some glasses to drink of. And uh, we are translating this into like the random way, uh, which is like a tangible object uh, con uh, consisting of different layers. But in the same way, we are also like rebuilding the whole scenery of the art piece with the original glasses of this artist who gave them to us and the original bottle and the original like uh, situation on the table and like a third version, which is placed in the middle, which is then um, like um, narrowing, it, narrow, narrowing it down and uh, like trying to translate uh, how sighted people would understand this painting uh, and the perspective of this painting and uh, yeah, translate it into something which is tangible. A uh, very, very nice project that we have done with a large focus group also uh, like of blind and partially sighted people. Very difficult for us, this project, because it was right in the time of COVID and uh, we couldn't meet. We had to do everything over Zoom. We had to explain and describe all the ideas that we had and uh, our focus, our testers, our focus group were, has never been able to, to touch anything. They, they just had to understand it by, by, the, by their imagination. The um, exhibition is still going on and will be on display at least until January next year, so 2022. Um, so if you are interested in something like this and your way might lead you to Germany and you have the time, then you can go to Schleswig, the city in the north uh, where Schloss Gotthoff is uh, located. Yes, so uh, with this small um, introduction in our work, uh, you might see that, um, yeah, that we are convinced that many inclusive designs are rather barrier free than truly inclusive. And when I'm saying rather barrier free, then because those so-called inclusive design solutions uh, only create an equalization of disadvantages, but they never allow to, to reach to an equal participation or even beyond to something which is new and which, you know, combines different user groups. So in the, the accessibility, my focus is uh, yeah, enabling a blind person to read a text, maybe by Braille, but never combining it with something uh, visual for partially sighted, which then also could benefit by um, tactile images and so on. 
And uh, But in our understanding of inclusion, this actually should be the goal of combining at least of yeah, combining of at least two different user groups of people with limitations and people with like random abilities um, to, to make them meet and to make them experience something together. So exactly this screen or this sign, which would say you as a person sitting in a wheelchair, uh, please, take the, uh, please, please take the accessible entrance from the background or the backside of the building, this would usually not be our goal of achieving inclusion. Uh, even if also we know that not always this will be possible. So also this sign here is something which uh, is from one of our designs, a railway station, which is heritage protected and where we, are no, where we were not allowed to take away the stairs in, from the front side of the building. So uh, of course, this is then something where you meet your own limitations and like some boundaries, yeah. But uh, if we talk about inclusive design, then in our understanding, uh, we have to do much more than just the accessibility. This is something that I already said, but of course, accessibility is the basis. So we are not discussing any goals of, uh, of accessibility, but we want to add uh, additional um, value to our design projects. And one of those additional values is that we would like to add the usability of it, the user friendliness of a design, of a service, of an experience. And then beyond from there, it is also about acceptability. So our solutions have to be stigma free so that also maybe like the elderly woman or the elderly person who is not yet partially sighted, but which is uh, who is hard of seeing uh, that also she or he uh, would accept our uh, proposal and would use it um, exactly as all the others, um, yeah. And of course, if we are talking about acceptability, then the last and most important point is that we have to talk about aesthetics and emotion, uh, emotionality. Um, so in a world where we can't buy any sports shoe anymore without, you know, like um, um, getting a whole concept of uh, emotionality and um, lifestyle and so on, uh, why shouldn't also those values be added to inclusive design solutions. So when we talk about people with disabilities, yes. So those four criteria are like the basis of our work. Of course, we are combining this and those ideas with some more values and techniques and those values and techniques that we are like um, adding to it are then the very, very important universal design principles that are existing. And uh, we combine it also with the concept of design thinking because we do believe that especially new inclusive design solutions might be totally beyond all the solutions that we have already seen. So we should be very, very open and very um, interested in, um, yeah, exploring a new, a new world, a new inclusive world, so to say. Um, and to achieve this, to reach to the real inclusive design, of course, something very important has to happen, especially for designers who usually would prefer to work in the night when it is dark outside in their own office and you know, start clicking on their computer. They have to get out into the real life and we have to meet. And uh, by that, the most important requirement of working uh, in an inclusive design area is um, to not only talk about people with disabilities, but to talk with them so that we in focus groups always try to come up with solutions with new ideas in the first phase of a project. But of course, later on in the project, when we are then adding all the aesthetics and everything again, then also there, we are going back to our focus groups, to our users, and uh, we are testing and trying everything out when it comes to measurements, when it comes to materials, when it comes to heights and so on. Um, yeah, because we want to, to create something 
altogether. And by that, and this is to me the most interesting part in universal or inclusive design, the usual design process becomes something um, like democratic. It is like, to me, inclusive design should be in democratic design process where I'm as a as a designer where I'm giving up power and I'm sharing the power with others yeah in order to reach new to the horizon to something new the picture that I'm showing here is from a very nice little project we did here in Berlin uh, for a, for a church where we, where we were like um, adding or like installing in a church tactile objects on the architecture, on arches, and yeah, all the different uh, parts of yeah of this church of this place, but also small projects like, for example, um, yeah, tactile uh, paintings um, here, like a tactile painting which we did for something again in the north of Germany and in the city of Oldenburg. Also, those projects were done together with blind and partially sighted. Um, what I said about a democratic design process and uh, what I said about achieving new horizons, so to say, is that um, I'm always interested in, uh, in realizing a universal or inclusive design uh, that succeeds to connect the aesthetic worlds of people with and without disabilities. So it is not only about um, making something accessible, but also something enjoyable and um, yeah, to, to, in order to achieve a shared moment of different people. Yes, by that I wanna say, I want to say thank you. And um, yeah, if you are interested in our work, you can look on our webpage. Uh, you can find it on www.inkel.design. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.